Now take an equation uh, of the form just discussed. In other words, uh, this equation we will try to find P from this equation and we remind ourselves that P stands for dy dx. Now from here it is very easy to see that this is nothing but P minus e to the power of x into P minus e to the power of minus x is equal to 0. So, if that be the case, then either p minus e to the power of x is 0 or p minus e to the power of minus x is equal to 0. So, we take the cases one by one, p minus e to the power of x is equal to 0 or the second factor is equal to 0. Let us take the first factor, first factor p minus e to the power of x is equal to 0. In other words, dy dx is equal to e to the power of x. And this implies y is equal to e to the power of x plus c 1. In other words, y minus e to the power of x minus c 1 is 0. So, this is the solution for y in terms of x and a constant. The next, the next uh, factor will yield, if I integrate this, we get dy dx is equal to e to the power of minus x. So, y is equal to minus e to the power of minus x plus c 2 and this gives us y plus e to the power of minus x minus c 2 is equal to 0. So, for the original equation, the product of these two solutions is equal to 0 is fine because each of them is a solution. So, the product of them equated to 0 is also a solution and that is the most general way of writing the solution. So, we will do that. The general solution therefore, y minus e to the power of x minus c 1 into y plus e to the power of x minus c 2 is equal to 0. This is the general solution, but we must again keep in mind that the equation being of the first order may be any degree, second degree in this particular case. c 1 and c 2 have to be equal. So, for minus c 1 and for plus c 2, we will write just 1 c and then that will become a solution. So, general solution is transformed to y minus e to the power of x plus c into y plus e to the power of minus x plus c is equal to 0. So, this is the general solution for that particular equation, which we factored here and then we got two factors in the solution. Note again that there is only one arbitrary constant in the solution, because the equation is of the first order. That determines the number of arbitrary constants in the most general solution. So, we will now move to another example. We write down the equation and carry on with its solution. Well, we now take another example of uh, what we just did. That is, we are uh, solving the equations which are solvable for 
P. We just did one example. This is another example. It looks uh, rather formidable, but we'll see how to get across to solve in for P in terms of X and Y. Now, we have to factor this. The factorization does not look uh, very easy, but we'll apply one small algebraic trick. Now, this implies if I take x y common, then p square minus p into 3 x square minus 2 y square over x y minus 6 is equal to 0. In other words, x y into p square minus p. This is 3 x by y. This is minus 2 y by x. Minus 6. This minus 6 we write as minus 6 into or rather plus of plus of 3x over y and minus of 2y over x. This is equal to 0. Now, one can see that this is of the form <coughs> p square minus p alpha plus beta plus alpha beta is equal to 0. So, if I write alpha and for minus 2y by x, if I write beta, this is alpha and this is beta. So, we have p square minus p into alpha plus beta plus alpha beta is equal to 0. Now, this has factors alpha and beta. So, this implies that we can write the equation as x y into p minus alpha into p minus beta is equal to 0. So, that is it. So, the roots are alpha and beta. So, p is either alpha that is 3 x over y or p is beta that is minus 2 y over x. So, what we get here is p is equal to alpha and alpha is 3 x over y or p is equal to beta and beta as we said is minus 2 y over x minus 2 y over x. We will solve each of these and see what values we get as solutions. So, I rub out the entire board keeping only those two equations intact. And of course, I will put this equation right on top so that it stays as a reference. <coughs> well, we can keep it here. First, we take p is 3 x over y. Case 1, p has emerged as 3 x over y. This implies that dy dx is equal to 3 x over y. This implies y dy minus 3 x dx is equal to 0 minus 3 x dx is equal to 0 and upon integration we get 
y square by 2 minus 3 x square by 2 is equal to some c 1. In other words, y square minus 3 x square minus 2 c 1 is equal to 0. So, this gives us y square minus 3 x square minus 2 c 1 is equal to 0. y square minus 3 x square minus 2 c 1 is equal to 0. That is it. That is the first uh, solution which arises from this condition. So, we will hold this solution somewhere up and then tackle the next one that is p is equal to minus 2 y over x. If we hold the first solution, we get uh, y square minus 3x square minus 2c1 is equal to 0. We take the next one that is p is equal to minus 2y over x. This implies that dy dx is equal to minus 2y over x. That implies dy over y is minus 2 dx over x. Minus 2 dx over x. And when this is integrated, we will get upon integration log e y is minus 2 log e x plus c 2. In other words, y is equal to this tells us y is equal to e to the power of minus 2 log x plus c 2. Now, this can be written as e to the power of minus 2 log x into e to the power of c 2. e to the power of c 2 can be condensed to one constant, which we will call, call let us say a 2. So, this is nothing but 1 over x square into some a 1, because e to the power of c 2 is multiplicative with e to the power of minus 2 log x, which is 1 over x square. So, we can write x square y minus a 1 as 0. So, as we have seen earlier, the complete solution will be the product of this solution and this solution equated to 0. So, that we can write the general solution as x square y minus a 1 is equal to 0. But having two different independent constants would be unfair to the equation because this is a first order equation and it only allows for a single arbitrary constant in the solution. So, that is fairly simple. We will write plus c for 2 c 1 with a minus and we will write plus c for minus a 1 that will do the necessary completion. So, we can finally write the general solution as this factor 
brought down here with this replaced by C and this factor brought down with this replaced as C is equal to 0. That is the general solution. It has one arbitrary constant and that syncs with the type of equation that we are solving.